Hi all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video, we'll study about the creation of data factory pipeline in Fabric with the scenario of copying the data from the data lake storage into to the lake house, which is present in Fabric. So let's now first create a new workspace. We'll go to the workspace here and we'll click on plus new workspace. Let's name this workspace as cloud knowledge data factory. The rest of the settings will leave it as is. Click on apply. So a new workspace named as cloud knowledge data factory is created, which is currently having nothing. And here we have the button just below the name of the workspace as new, create new. If we click over it, we have multiple options which are present as of the date in Microsoft Fabric to create data pipeline, data flow and other options. Then, then second option is upload to upload data from the different sources. Third is to create app, manage access, etc. So in this video, we are going to copy a CSV from storage Azure data lake storage into to the lake house which is present in fabric. So for this purpose, we'll click on plus new and create a data pipeline which is used to ingest data at scale and schedule data workflows. So we'll click over it, data pipeline. It will now prompt us to name the pipeline. We'll name it as pipeline, copy ADLS to lake house copy ADLS lake house click on create pipeline copy ADLS lake house will be open shortly so this page is open now and to start building the pipeline we have the options present here First option is to add pipeline activity where if we click here, we'll get the different options of the different activities which are present currently in the data factory of the fabric. Okay, then directly a copy data activity because it's the most frequently used activity which will be shown here and then choose a task to start. So we'll go with clicking on add pipeline activity and selecting copy data activity. We'll click on copy data. It will open up copy data activity. Same as it is viewed in the ADF, it will be shown here in the data factory of the fabric. The first tab is general tab. We'll leave it as is. We'll go to the source tab. In the source tab from the fabric, we have to connect to the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen2 account. Now let's first check the ADLS Gen2 account, which we are going to access here in this source data set. So we'll go to the storage into account here. We are inside the storage into account inside the containers. Here we have different containers. We'll click on input. Let's say we are inside the input container, which is having different files. So in this example, we'll copy one of the three files present here to the lake house of the fabric. And in order to access these files, we have to give the connection details there in fabric. Let's go back. And here we'll go to the endpoints. The endpoints are present here under the settings. Under the endpoints tab, we'll go down. And here under the data lake storage option, we have this endpoint present. So we'll copy this endpoint where the name of the storage account dot dfs dot go dot windows dot net is present. So we'll copy this. We'll go back. And here the data storage type will be external. Okay, the data is present externally into the Azure. Hence, we'll not select the other two options. We'll go to the connections and click on plus new. We are going to connect to the new connection. Now, in this connection prompt, it will show us the different options. So we'll select the Azure because our data is present in Azure Cloud inside the ADLS Gen2. Now, from among these options, we'll select ADLS Gen2. Click continue. First option to 
give here is the URL, the URL of the ADLS Gen 2 endpoint to connect to. To avoid invalid credentials, be aware to use .dfs then .blob. Okay, so we have copied the .dfs endpoint, hence it is correct. It looks fine. We'll click on OK. And here we are connected to the storage Gen2 account. The point to note is that the login which is done to the Power BI here, it got connected because the login which is used for the Azure portal, Azure cloud, as well as here in the Power BI is the same. Now the second option is connection type. We'll test the connections. Connection is successful. Now, now under the drop down, we'll select Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, not for the Cosmos stream. So we'll select ADLS Gen 2 from the connection type. After selecting Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 or the connection type, we, we will get other options, file path type, file path, etc. We can give the direct file path by browsing into that storage Gen 2 account. So let, let's click on browse. And we could see all the different containers which were present inside the storage Gen2 account. So if we go back here to the containers, let's go back here in the containers. We could see the same folders or the containers present here. Let's go to the input folder. We'll select one of the, here we'll select unpivot.csv, let's say, click OK. It will show us the file path, input container, there was no directory, directly we have selected the file. Recursively is the options, let it be checked. File format is binary, it is showing, but we know that it is CSV. Here, Avro, binary, delimited text, Excel, JSON, ORC, Parky, etc. Ours is delimited text because it's a CSV. File format is selected. Here we have next as advanced. We need not make any change here in the advanced tab. So the source setting for the copy data operation is done. Next we'll go to the destination tab. In the destination tab we have three options data stored type as workspace or external. If we want to load the data externally we'll select external let's say to a database or storage into account we'll select this but in this example we are going to copy it to the lake house so the next option is workspace data store type if it is selected as workspace it will show us the workspace data store type if we go to external that option will be removed so we'll select it as workspace and the data store type it will show us the three different options which are present in fabric lake house kql database and data warehouse in this example, we'll let the option be selected as lake house. Next is lake house. Which lake house? If you already have some lake house in your fabric account, it will show up or else we can create a new lake house. So we'll click on plus new and we'll name this as a new lake house. Cloud knowledge lake house. Click on create. You can read in detail about lake house from the official Microsoft documentation. It is basically one lake where everything is stored together in the form of files, folders. It also has the SQL endpoint where you can see the tables where the data is also stored in the form of tables. And basically lake house is built on top of ADLS Gen 2. Lake house is selected. It will open up options below root folder whether it should be pointing to some tables or to files how the data should be loaded in the lake house if we select the option tables it will show us to give the table name okay and if we select it as files it will ask us to give the file path file format so we'll let it be files we will let the file path be as is file format is delimited for csv and in the and if we click on browse, it will show us 
the root folder where our file will be landed. Click OK. So we completed the destination tab. In the mappings and the settings tab, we leave the settings as is. Let's validate this mapping. Your pipeline has been validated. Click close and let's run. As soon as we click on run, it will ask us to save and run. Click on save and run. Here on the right side, we'll get it saving running. Same as EDF here in the output, we could see after refreshing that our pipeline is getting executed. It's in progress. Let's wait for its completion. It completed successfully. In the options, we could see in the input the different settings which we gave, the source settings, and in the output, we could see that the data is written. Okay, input output. And if we click on this third icon, details icon, we could see the copy data details. The source was Gen2, destination as lake house, the state has succeeded, time, pipeline run activity ID, throughput, total duration, duration breakdown. Then in advance, we have triggered whether it is manual or it is through trigger. Now here file read was one and file written is one. Cool. We'll close it. So the pipeline completed successfully. We'll go to the cloud knowledge workspace, cloud knowledge data factory workspace, which we have created. And here in the workspace and here in the workspace, we could see that the very first option from bottom to app is the data pipeline, which we have created where inside the data factory pipeline, we have cre created this cloud knowledge lake house. Lake house is shown. And in this cloud knowledge lake house, we could see the two sub options created at the top. First is the SQL endpoint. Okay, it is auto generated as soon as the lake house is created. And the second is this data set, which is default. We'll open the data set because we have selected the option to land the file copied from the storage gen 2 because we have selected the option of copying the data to the folder. We'll close this. From this page, we'll select the cloud knowledge lake house. Then here we could see the option to open this lake house. Click over it. And in the page of this lake house, we could see on the left side, Explorer tab where we have the name of the lake house, then the different tables if they are present there and the files. So since we have selected the files, we could see under the files option unpivot.csv file is present, which is copied using the fabric data factory pipeline, which we have just executed. So here is the file. If we try to preview the contents of the file, we'll click over it and you could see the details of the file. It was having five columns and two rows. If we go back here into the input folder of the ADLS Gen 2, try to open open and preview the unpivot.csv. We could see the same data, which is now copied to the fabric lake house in the form of a file. Now let's go back to the pipeline. So what we basically did here is connected to the ADLS Gen 2 of the Azure cloud. And then we wanted to copy a CSV from there to the lake house here on the fly. While creation of this pipeline, we created a lake house and landed the file into the files folder, root folder of the lake house. Hence, we could see that it landed into the files explorer section, not in the tables. In upcoming videos, we'll explore the other options of the lake house. Hope you have understood this simple demo on Fabric Data Factory Pipeline. Thank you for watching the video. Let me know in comments if you have any queries. Happy learning. Bye.